Hey everyone, if you've watched our previous videos, you would have seen that we have these new exterior studding brackets. We've developed these brackets to allow us to frame the outside of a shipping container. This is a totally different way that we do things. This changes everything, because typically we have worked inside the container with different framing methods, such as a strut channel or a steel stud. But here now, finally, I do not believe in wood, but finally, I think there's a purpose for it outside of your building envelope. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually install these. We didn't really elaborate on that in the previous video, so I'm gonna install a base bracket and an upper bracket. And another thing we're gonna do is just look at the insulation options. We're just gonna do a little bit of science experiments here, but we'll get you more information on that in a future video. Stay tuned. I'm Channing McCorriston, The Container Guy. Before we get into this video, I wanna show you something. We accidentally on purpose did a science experiment here where we've taken some zinc rich primer and we've sprayed uh, the top of the channel before we installed this exterior stud bracket. And you can see there, there is no rust starting, but the one beside it where we didn't put any primer or nothing or protect the surface here from the, the metal shards of the drill bit, it's already starting to rust. And I imagine over time, that is gonna rust away. And if this is a structural member of your, uh, your envelope now, you're gonna want these things to last forever. And so uh, probably a very good idea now, take a zinc rich primer. It's not just a regular primer, it's, it's zinc. And so this is uh, sacrificial. It'll create a sacrificial layer. It will rust or oxidize prior to uh, actually rust happening. So it protects the surface and will ensure that these things last forever. But now, yeah, let, let's get into it. Let's. Uh, show you how the base one's installed and then we'll jump up on top and finish off the upper side of this. So what we did prior, cause these have been installed before is uh, marked out where they go. And so you just kind of set them in place. The profile of this matches the profile of the sidewall corrugations. And we've eliminated enough material here to account for the welds. Every once in a while you could get a rogue weld. You might want to grind that, especially if you are uh, touching up the paint afterwards, but all in all, uh, it really doesn't matter in the, in the end, as long as you uh, try to get them all on the same plane so that your wall's not going all wobbly, and you can check that later. They are also slotted to allow you for uh, some movement. I don't know if these slots actually change to be vertical or not in another revision. Another revision that we changed on these is we've just taken a little bit off the bottom because we'd like this bottom plate now to be flush, the top of this to be flush with the, the channel here. And the reason for that is so that where the fork pockets are, where we want to lift this thing up. Now, when you go to lift up, you're not going to lift on your wood. You're just still lifting the container when you're handling this with a forklift. So just some minor changes that we made to these brackets. This was a prototype version. The ones that you would be purchasing that are available for sale are the newer revisions. Uh, but yeah, so let's just get right at it. Uh, to begin, we would have taken our black marker, line it up to center it. You would mark the holes and you either pre-drill them. So if you're using uh, thread cutting screws, which I swear by, so it's a, it's a finer thread. It's a, a metal machine thread more than the self-tapper would be more like a wood thread. So you'll get a lot more grab with this type of uh, screw and they, they don't really snap off. So if you pre-drill prior and use your thread cutting screws rather than a self-tapping screw and then just punch them in. So one. And you can kind of align this. Uh, you can keep it parallel with the bottom channel and that will let you know that you're not going wonky on your stud. So here are even I was able to adjust it and I really like that there now. There's one more on the bottom here. We'll do that and then we can jump up on the top. So when you place these to mark them out, the holes, the front edge of this should be flush to the front edge of the channel and that's when you know you're in the right spot. And then just eyeball it to be uh, centered in the corrugation. And they are slotted holes so you can even mark the slots so you know uh, where the center would be. Then you'd grab your drill. 
and then you would repeat that with a 730 seconds drill bit and you notice right here all these drill shards that is what was causing the paint to rust so that is what we want to avoid at bare minimum blow it away so before you screw this on you'll want to apply either that paint or you could also probably just put a layer of uh, sealant whether it's like clear silicone or something to just really protect that layer that there's a really nice layer of zinc which will be the sacrificial layer and protect this uh, if we try to stay out of your way and let you watch this <laughs> and so ideally we want it lined up right on the front edge here <laughs> so because i uninstalled and now reinstalled these brackets i'm at the mercy of the last person's install and i can see here that i'm not perfectly flush to the outside of the bottom channel and so that is what has been changed on the new revision now those slots are just straight up and down so you get your your uh your holes drilled you get your your uh, hex head uh, thread cutters in there and then you have the adjustment in and out and that's going to ensure that your whole wall all the way down is on a nice plumb plane and you're not going to see bowling in your your siding whatever you choose to finish off this shipping container so now let's jump up top and hopefully it goes a bit smoother grab yourself a secure ladder for the top ones and what's nice about these is that uh, they actually define the sorry holding it upside down they define the, the, the plane outwards for you. They just bottom out once you get them up into the right spot. And so they just slide right on. They hug this top 60 millimeter tubing and you would just follow the same process. Grab your marker, get underneath there, mark your two holes, grab your drill and pre-drill them. Fake. And then your impact and your thread cutters and away you go. So it's pretty simple. What's nice is once you get your, uh, your top stud going across here, that stud going across actually holds this thing in place. You'd hardly have to secure this if you trusted your, your wood holding it, but I like a nice mechanical fastener here for, uh, for warranty sake. And that's on there solid. Another interesting thing to note there is those were also installed for a month and there was no sign of rust or anything, uh, corrosion, whatever happening. So these being installed in the underside of the tubing, it doesn't seem like there's any issues with uh, metal shards or anything there. So it seems to be the bottom there where you're sandwiching bare metal between two planes of metal is where you need to protect that. But yeah, we got that. Next step here now is let's uh, get the wood studs installed. This is where we are not familiar with uh, t types of construction here at the Container Guy. So let's install our uh, outside studs. Let's grab them. One thing that's interesting to note on these is if you look down, you can see where we installed it on our prototype is the, we're like three-eighths of an inch down from the underside of the bracket. And that's why we can't really handle this thing very well with the forklift. And so where you see the sun hasn't hit this two by four, if it should have, that line should have been right at the bottom of the stud and then your uh, bottom plate would have been right up nice and tight. I'm gonna put them back to where they were just so I don't have to redo this whole container. But in the next version or our next videos that you see, you will see us snug that thing right up. Oh, hard on tools. Okay, so here, uh, these brackets have some holes. On the right side, it'll be towards the top and then the bottom, uh, towards the bottom of the larger 3 8 center hole. So there's a couple ways that you could mount your studs to here. You could drill with a 3 8 bit all the way through and through bolt this stud on, or you could grab a couple wood screws if you trust this and just go through the top and bottom holes. Oh, don't lose them. But here, I'm gonna wanna 
align it right. Oh, dropped her anyway. Oh my God, caught. I just had to take a little frustration break there and try to get all these uh, two by fours lined up perfectly again. But just over the short time that this thing's been sitting here out in the sun, especially this board here is really twisted now on me. And so took a little bit of elbow grease to get it back in there. But that's why I really like steel studs. Is they're always just perfectly straight. There's no uh, time delay on, you know, leaving it for a month sitting in the sun and now you've ruined your whole project. So whatever, we're working with wood here. Let's get these screwed in. Comment down below if I'm doing this wrong. Or if we should be using the 3 8 bolt through there. We have that laser cut in there for you guys as options. But these things are pretty stiff. So even just the, the bend profile to get that, that true inch and a half or actually just whatever uh, a two by four stud wants it to be. I think it's 1.47 inches of ID inside of there so that it just really grabs that two by four. It was difficult for our brake operator, but uh, he was able to get it done after about five different tries. And yeah, we appreciate that, that it, it really just holds these things in place while you're working. I can't get under there to screw or an air nail normally, so I'm just gonna toenail them, so to speak. Now, back up top. So same goes up here. We actually gave you a 3 8 hole, a quarter inch hole, and then a smaller, I think 3 16 hole for our wood screws. And so the weakest of the three, the little wood screw hole. Might not reach and grab that one. But one thing, this is a good uh, opportunity to show you is the first time around, we, we cut these right flush to the outside, which I don't even think is how we designed it, but how the guys in the yard did it. Uh, another thing, I guess, if you want to know the length of this, I think it's about 95 inches, but I'll get the editors to throw that in the, on the video screen there, just to know the exact cut length of both the wall studs and the roof studs. And it's different for the wall studs for standard or high cube. There'll be a 12 inch difference because standards are eight and a half feet tall. High cubes are nine and a half foot tall containers. They're all eight feet wide. Plus we're ex uh, extending outwards. But what would be better for this, right now you got nothing to secure your plywood or whatever that you're doing for the, the sides or across the top. So we should have cut this top board three inches less. inch and a half on either side. If we would install this here, it still connects uh, through this bracket. It still connects your vertical stud to your horizontal stud, but now allows you for a top plate, so to speak. But your top plate is going to be vertical. So you could run another two by four. This might not work, but I'll see if I can show you. You can run another two by four uh, right on top. Oh yeah. That would have been so much better. Now you can screw right into here and you actually have something to finish off to. So we got our bottom plate and our top plate for our wall now and something even just when you're, if you're caulking the edge or you're building a deck up here, you're doing something or a waterproof roof of some sort, you can seal it all up. But let's get this one screwed on. I'm gonna put it where we need to. I'm pretty close to the edge here, so we'll, as an experiment, see if we split. Already that's tight, and we still have, you know, more areas here to secure this one going across. Uh, if you look here, you can see there's about a half inch underneath this uh, stud to the top of the roof corrugation. So that's gonna allow if you're to build another whole structure on top of here and you were to spray foam this floor to get rid of the steel from uh, radiating cold or whatever up through your floorboards, you still get some foam under there to give you that, that uh, thermal break there. So I might undo this quick now just for the sake of this video. 
and oh, put it back where it needs to be. Just get this last board in place here. But in this, uh, in this video, you see me See me be a little indecisive on exactly where I should be mounting these and how these brackets should work. And I think that's actually half the beauty of them is that I'm not gonna tell you how to be a carpenter. You guys know that better than I do. But what these brackets do for you is they allow you to convert a steel container and the whole process of welding and all this structure back to traditional wood construction. And so the beauty behind it is, you know, this is what our parents taught us. This is the, the construction method that, that we know. Where I see on the internet, everyone modifying containers are doing it wrong. So don't be watching videos of a husband and wife in inappropriate clothing, modifying a container home for the first time and expect that that's where you're gonna learn your lessons from and that's who you're gonna replicate because I got friends, I got coworkers, I got, everyone shares me these videos of these container homes and it almost makes me want to puke in my mouth watching how they're doing it because I know that that home's only gonna last five, 10 years and uh, doesn't justify the amount of money that they've spent on, on constructing those. Uh, one last screw here. But there you have it, this is the exterior studding bracket installed on a 20 foot one time use shipping container. This totally opens the door for us to so many different modifications. With this, we can bury shipping containers. What we've heard lots in the comments is people want us to build an awning over top of the container doors. We don't get a ton of rain here in Saskatchewan, but uh, there are wet locations where even just accessing your shipping container, I guess a lot of people want uh, the ability to yeah, just keep the ground nice and moist, or I don't know if you're backing your truck up and your doors are open, at least you're not hand bombing things out of your, your box in the soaking rain. So sure, uh, from here, we can create a cantilevered opening. We can party decks on top. We can cantilever across. You could park your, you know, have a sunshade. You can take two of these shipping containers and spread them out 10, 12, 24 feet that could be a parking area. That could be the, the starting point to a container home. So there's, there's lots of different options that these brackets open up, even just building double wide kits. Now, if you put a two by 10 here and you had two containers and you ran this across before cutting all your walls out and you had two containers put together, you could probably cut out all of your uh, side walls and use your, your uh, floor joist, so to speak, on the second level or your roof trusses to hold that wall up now instead of that super expensive double wide kit that everyone loves but doesn't want to pay for. We might have uh, a low cost option for you just in these brackets, but everyone's got a different opinion. Everyone has a different project that they want to uh, create. And so we can't design them all. We're not going to design them for you. You got to use your brain and your uh, knowledge of wood construction purchase these brackets to simplify the process of modifying shipping containers and you should be on your way to building yourself a container home. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That uh, is us just responding to you guys in the comments, letting, uh, you know, we hear you, we know what you guys want. You want a closer view of how these actually install. That is how they work. Uh, let's jump down and just give you a quick preview of our next video that we're gonna show you guys. It's gonna be very helpful for planning container homes. Insulation. So our next door neighbor, they build, uh, well they build a lot of things, but they build sheds and stuff and they had some of this icky stuff laying around. And so we have some fiberglass insulation here. These are 24 inch on center uh, framing insulation battens and basically we frame 22 inches on center. So the corrugations are 279 millimeters on average on center. And so this is two inches in theory, too wide. I have not tested this yet. Let's see if we can try to throw one in and if it works. So, ah. Okay. 
I'm curious how much it wants to pop out because we are uh, compressing it a bit. I'm sure people that know insulation can comment down below. Let us know if this will work. Does this ruin the R value of the, the battens because it's compressed too much? But another interesting thing, thing to note here is we framed with two by fours. We have these voids in here behind and this is uh, for a two by six wall cavity, the insulation. And so it does kind of fill that void, but in the next video, I'll go way more in on this. I wouldn't mind you guys training me on a little bit so I don't sound stupid in that because I do want to really analyze the way that we can insulate this envelope. I truly feel there's a, a flash and bat method that would be the best with like foam and a batten insulation. But fiberglass, in my opinion, stay away from it. There is better products like uh, mineral wool insulation. So this is just ground up rocks rather than glass bottles and it doesn't wick moisture. So with mineral wool, if there's water down here, you're not gonna feel moisture up here like you would with fiberglass. And this comes in either like a safe and sound batten where it will protect uh, for, against fire and give you some uh, acoustical advantages there versus there's also their rain barrier that they call now too. So it's really meant for damp, moist environments. So if you're in a climate zone that is super humid, stay away from fiberglass. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into that in another video. Just wanted to quickly showcase this, how it fits and and do another little science experiment. But what do you guys think? I think it fits in there pretty good. Uh, this would insulate and it really depends on your climate. So if you're down Southern States, maybe this works, but here in Canada, this is not how I would be building my container home. So I guess, yeah, if you guys found this video helpful or informative, help us out, give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos on shipping container related uh, modifications or construction, I guess nowadays, please subscribe to that channel and ring the bell for notifications. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.